uh, from Sam Marcus, uh, covering carried on SMTX TV live. I'm Rob Rourke, your host, and this is Thursday night, uh, the 16th of September. Glad to have you with us tonight, and we have got a great show ahead for you. And uh, we've got uh, a couple different guests. We're uh, uh, going to try to cram a lot in tonight, and uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, get you all uh, to call in and talk to our guests and that, uh, get everyone thinking because you know what we're all about is for getting people involved in the community this is what it's about is that this is a way for you to get some ideas on how you can get involved and how you can get out there and stand up for your rights stand up for your community and really get involved as part of we the people and make a difference you know, what we're going to show tonight is that one person really can make a difference. I know so much of the time people say, can, you know, what can I do and how do I get involved? It doesn't matter. Just get involved and start someplace. And that's what we're going to talk about. We've got uh, a couple different guests tonight. Uh, uh, we're going to start off tonight with uh, Robert uh, Nowotny. And uh, he is a libertarian candidate uh, for uh, Texas State Representative in District 73 which is our neighbor right uh, to uh, uh, the other side of us here in Comal County. And uh, uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, there about uh, some of the things that affect both of our counties. And one of the things there is uh, water rights, uh, Edwards Aquifer, the authority. And we're going to talk about how it's not just one person that you elect, but that uh, the legislator and how you have authorities that we've given power to and that we've uh, that also have an effect on our our property rights and on your rights as citizens. So we're going to talk about that tonight. We've Let's get on uh, to talking with Robert. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. It's my pleasure. Good. And you know. What I kind of started this off to be tonight was that we wanted to talk a little bit about the idea with the show is that I want to get people understanding in the local community, not all that's going on up in Washington, but that our rights are being taken away from us right here locally. Mm -hmm. And the Edwards Aquifer Authority um, is, uh, I've got a slide there, and just you know, so people understand the breadth of the Edwards Aquifer when we're talking about that, is, you know, a we're going all the way over to Uvalde County. Yes, correct. And there is a board that is elected. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, there is uh, a local candidate here. Peggy Jones is uh, one person I invited tonight that is running here locally mm -hmm. uh, for that board uh, from the San Marcos District. Um, but this board has their own budget. They've got their own buildings and their own uh, staff, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And what what is their power, and how how are we seeing that? How does that affect us as citizens? Well, the the interesting thing is a lot of people think that the Edwards Aquifer is there to protect the water uh, availability for the homeowners and for the industry and the, and, the, and for people. But the fact of the matter is, is that it was uh, basically formed as a result of a uh, lawsuit that went to federal court and the judge uh, and the suit was brought on by the Sierra Club and it was about the endangered species both flora and fauna that are in the Kamal River and in the San Marcos River and basically the uh, uh, state of Texas was told you will protect those endangered species not only must they live but they must thrive so you have to ensure that the water flow for them is always more than adequate and uh, generally speaking, if that's the case, then there's enough water for people as well. But there could be some cases where uh, maybe uh, people have to really sacrifice to, to keep those critters alive. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's how it got started. Right. And, I, I, you know, one of the, the little facts about San Marcos and, uh, you know, also for New Braunfels mm -hmm. is that, uh, you know, we have per capita the most endangered species Mm -hmm. uh, here in the area. You it's know, pretty, and, pretty amazing, and it's kind of cool. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a worthy uh, cause, and, and so the legislature said, you know, if we don't do something in Texas, then the federal government's going to come in, and then we're really not going to be happy. And so they uh, decided that they would form the uh, Edwards Aquifer Authority, 
Um, and initially, uh, the, bill, uh, the thing went through, and they were going to be just a, uh, appointed board members. And the word permanent was in there somewhere, like they could be <laughs> permanently appointed. And the uh, Department of Justice came in, the Federal Department of Justice came in and said, no, 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 these people have to be elected. So they went through an election process, but of course nobody really knew much of anything, so the people who were appointed in the first place were pretty much elected across the board. Right. And uh, what's interesting, and one of the things that bothers me the most, is that the people who can get on this board don't have to have any knowledge whatsoever about hydrology, aquifers, water management, water rights, uh, endangered species, or any of that. They can be just regular folks, and then they start making decisions, and the board's decisions get handed down and it gets implemented, and a lot of them are just uh, learning on the job. And in fact, I have a political opponent in my race who uh, was one of the first, and he just recently, like two weeks ago, did say in the uh, Bandera newspaper, yeah, you know, I kind of learned uh, uh, by the basis of osmosis. Well, you know, if you're, if you're in an airliner, you don't want your pilot learning on the <laughs> basis of osmosis because that can affect your life. And I would think that while you don't have to be an expert to be on the board, if you don't have a training and a background in it, you should at least maybe have some courses, some training that you must go through to get up to like at least, you know, water management 101 before right. you start making decisions. That's not the way it is now. Well, so the board, you know, this is kind of how it started out mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, with good intentions. Mm -hmm. And the funding is through the uh, uh, Texas legislature. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, we've had here recently in Hayes County uh, quite an uproar because what was happening was that there was some new things that were being implemented, and they were starting out in Hayes County. Yep. And this is where some of the citizens of Comal County were kind of looking over the line <laughs> and up over the hill saying, oops, there's some stuff coming we don't like. And what, you know, I went to a couple of the hearings and a couple of the uh, uh, informational sessions they had, and what the citizens are concerned about is that they have wells that have been on their property for generations. Mm -hmm. And now the Edwards Aquifer Authority is coming in and saying that those wells have to be either used and monitored mm -hmm. or that they've got to be capped. And we're going to go and charge upwards of $2,000, $3,000 per well to cap those. Mm -hmm. The other problem was that what I heard was that they were coming onto their property mm -hmm. to find these wells mm -hmm. without having any okay from the people on the property That's right. and people were finding out they had wells that they didn't even know about right yeah. so you know what what's the fear from Comal County how do you feel about this and what's well it's interesting I don't know why they started at Hayes County you guys are just the lucky ones but you know <laughs> it is going to percolate uh, pun intended uh, down downstream but um, the, the thing that was really the, the first egregious error was that they wanted everybody with an exempt well. Now an exempt well is a well that can pump no more than 25,000 gallons a day. That's a lot of water. Yeah. Way more than the average house. I believe the average household of four might use 500 gallons of water a day. But these are wells that were designed not just for homes but for small uh, uh, agricultural purposes. So if you had a well that could not pump more than 25,000 gallons, then you were exempt and suddenly now they wanted everybody with these exempt wells to formally register them but they claim they didn't have the money to do a mailing and so they put ads in the paper and uh, maybe they did something on television and a lot of people didn't get the message mm -hmm. and then the expiration period comes by and it, it, you know by the time now they're in a penalty phase and so people were getting, you know, letters and things knocked on their door saying, you didn't register your well, and uh, now you're going to pay this fine. And people are saying, we didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, they did a very poor job, and I think they recognize that now, uh, just getting the wells registered. The second thing is what you're saying. They're coming on the property, and if they find a well that's abandoned, let's say, not being used, uh, they claim that it could be a source of uh, impurities coming into the water system, and you either have to put it to use, cap it, which is a temporary type thing, but you won't be using it, or you have to plug it. Now, they don't actually charge for this. They make you go out in the open mm -hmm. market to deal with contractors to do this for you. But, but they have the to be approved. They have to be approved, and yeah, right. but it's right. thousands of dollars mm -hmm. uh, to do this. 
and uh, that's got people up in arms to a great extent, and they're not getting any assistance financially from the uh, Edwards Aquifer to help pay this or, or what have you. So they, they've had a, a kind of a public relations nightmare. Well, I remember at the uh, one session that I went to uh, at the Dunbar Center, uh, Patrick Rose came down, our state representative, and uh, I know that uh, he chided them pretty hard, harshly. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, part of this too is that they are they're funded through the legislature, and a lot of the people have a lot of issues with the amount of money that they're spending. They're also, of course, funded by permit uh, fees for the uh, non-exempt wells. Non-exempt wells would be, uh, you know, SAWS, which is the San Antonio water uh, system. Uh, you've got the New Braunfels utilities, I guess San Marcos utilities, I'm not sure. Certainly the quarries outside uh, off of mm -hmm. I-35 uh, are huge users of water. Someone once told me that their quarries use more water in a year than all of New Braunfels combined, but I, I don't know if that's true, but it's a lot of water. So they pay permit fees, and uh, I forget what the budget is, but it's in the uh, high tens of millions of dollars. And, and uh, the bad thing is, is that by their own records, 49% goes to salaries, health benefits, and their buildings. Mm -hmm. And so less than, you know, almost mo only half goes to trying to really do things that are out there to help uh, keep that water flow going. And the way it was established initially was the legislature said, you've got to figure out a way for all these people with wells that they can have no more than 400,000 uh, acre feet uh, per year drawn from the aquifer because we think that's a safe level to keep those endangered species alive. And uh, that was based on some scientific study. Mm -hmm. And so they started going out and they went to people and said, what is your historical use? And of course, everybody, I mean, it's human nature, everybody mm -hmm. lied. Yeah. And they said, oh, we use this when they probably only use two-thirds as much. But when it was all said and done, over 500,000 acre feet became the norm and the standard. And the legislature just sat by and didn't do anything. So it's at 500 plus thousand acre feet. But the really bo bothering thing for me is, is that in Uvalde County, they were uh, saying, we're not going to go along with this. Uh, and we're talking about some very wealthy landowners mm -hmm. with large permit, well, well permits. And so instead of just getting the historical use for them in Uvalde County, they were given double the amount of water that they historically used, mm -hmm. well, including the inflated figure that everybody right. was doing. They got, nobody else got double, they got double. Now they were said now, the original amount that you, you know, had declared and that we were going to give you must stay with the land. The other half, you can sell, ah. and it's worth literally millions and millions of dollars. And the idea is they want to build a pipeline. These are the, the landowners with these uh, permits. They're some of the best-known families that are down there. Uh, I will name one because he's kind of a common household name. It's the, the Briscoe family. Mm -hmm. Ralph Briscoe was a governor. Yeah. He's one of the uh, wealthy landowners who, uh, of course, he passed away recently, but the family has this great amount of water that they can extract and sell if they can get a pipeline up to San Antonio. Currently, the pipeline is, is blocked by the legislature, but I know a lot of legislators are pushing for the pipeline because when you go follow the money, they're getting huge campaign contributions from these families. And, and so I think that's unfair. So the little guy up here in, uh, and, and, and collectively, I believe the uh, exempt wells don't use, but maybe at most 30% of the ex actual amount each year drawing from the aquifer. And 70% is industry and, mm -hmm. and all of this. So the, the little guy is getting stepped on again because they don't have the money to contribute to the campaigns and are kind of overlooked to the benefit, I think, of uh, certain select individuals. Oh.